Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Monroe, New Jersey, and I'm doing a panel upgrade. This house was built in 2012, and the original electrician installed a 150 amp main breaker panel with only 30 circuits. Today we're going to upgrade. First, let me say how grateful I am for the response that I've received since I started uploading these electrical videos. This particular customer here actually found me on YouTube, and so I just want to say thanks. Fourteen and one. So a few videos back, someone suggested I get these numbers, uh, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's a book of stickers with the numbers, well, 1 through 40 or whatever. And so this, being that this house is only 11 or 12 years old, a lot of the circuits were originally identified, and so they were accurate. And so what I did was I labeled each of the circuits with a number, uh, the way they were in this old panel. So that when I put the circuits in the new panel, it would make it easy to identify each of them, use my label maker, and be done with it instead of running extension cords and blasting radios and doing the old school way of identifying the circuits. So whoever's suggestion that was early on, I appreciate that. I've seen those books before, and I must have done about seven or eight of these uh, before I remembered to buy one and bring one with me. So this is the first time I actually had it with me, and it was a huge help. Instead of using white tape and a Sharpie, which seemed to take forever. The numbering system was very simple and I was done in about 15 minutes. So each of those circuits there are labeled. Uh, and so the first thing I had to do is take out all of the old circuits before I can remove the panel. And then uh, I needed to size this particular piece of plywood just right so I wouldn't be covering up some of the window. And then that four inch round box in the upper left hand corner I had to move that as well. So this could be very dangerous right here inside this meter. It's a 200 amp underground meter. The orange taped conductors on the right hand side there. This is my line side from, uh, I don't know if this is PSE&G or JCPNL. I think it's JCPNL because I don't see a fifth draw on that meter there. And so I'll measure, I think I had to take off like maybe four and a half or five inches and I'll draw a straight line. And then I'll come back with my six and a half inch Milwaukee M18 circular saw and make the cut. So, I didn't talk about it earlier, but this is how I found this, the panel board <laughs> that that old panel was mounted to. So, obviously, they painted around it. And so, really, all it is is just four 2x4s. Um, some of the 2x4s are just there. The 2x4s are just there, and they're screwed into the sheetrock, or rather, it's the OSB on the side here. So I'm just shoring these up by attaching these uh, two and a half inch screws to the uh, king stud here by the window. 
Now I know the out, both of the outside boards are attached really well. The ones in the middle, I'm telling you, they're just, uh, they're in there in sheetrock. I pulled one off the wall, I put it right back. But <clears throat> I only need to get two studs here attached uh, real well. And so I use these two and a half inch screws to do that. And then when I'm done, I'll attach the three quarter inch plywood to each of these outside two by fours. Okay, so once that panel board is up, the mounting board, I'm able to uh, prep my panel here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the main bonding jumper in first thing. That's the main bonding jumper screw that bonds the neutral uh, bus bar to the enclosure, which is what you're supposed to do with the main disconnect here. And here I'm using a Greenlee, an inch and a, inch and a half uh, carbide bit. And I'm just going to make a hole here so that my service entrance conductors have an opening to supply power to this panel. Once I have that opening, I set it on that piece of PVC and I'll use one screw here to uh, set the panel. Then I'll come back and do the final screws. That first screw just holds the panel in place so I can get my levels on there and make sure everything is plumb and level before I put my final screws in. Plum and level. In case you wonder what I'm doing here, I'm using a long cabinet screwdriver, which is a long flathead screwdriver, to tighten up the lock nuts. This gets the lock nuts secure and tight to the enclosure.
you're an electrician, you might remember these. They're called Kenny clamps. And this clamp supposedly gave you a better grounding electro connection to your enclosure. Uh, they were all the rage for about, I don't know, six or seven years. But they, were ne they never made it into the code book. Uh, even though I thought they were part of the code, I found out much later on that I didn't even need to use those and they were a waste of time completely. I haven't installed one of those in at least 15 years. I had to thread and tap this particular terminal right here because the concrete encased electrode that's attached to that Kenny clamp uh, was too short to reach the ground bar or the, the ground terminals up above. So I had to tap and use a bolt uh, to make my connection with my Ufer ground, they call it. The guy's name was John Ufer, but it's really a concrete encased electrode. The nice thing about the concrete encased electrode is that's the, that's the only ground you need. If you have that, you're tapped into the footing, the rebar inside the footing, and the code says if you have that, you don't need any supplementary electrodes like the ground rods, for instance. So this house is 11 years old, I think, and uh, pretty sure I didn't check, but I'm pretty sure it's a plastic um, incoming water line. And I didn't see any other old grounds going to the water main, so I, that's why I made that assumption. Uh, this other ground wire here is actually connected to the bus bar right here, but this just goes to the outside where you have that bonding bridge on the outside. That was connected already, so I just reconnected it here. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, do me a big favor so other people can find my channel and find these videos. Hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed and you like this content, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button as well. Hit the bell notification so you know when I upload new videos. This helps me grow the channel. Thank you. I'm almost finished here, but before I put the meter in, I always want to make sure I check the load side at the meter for any ground faults, which is a hot to ground fault, a short circuit, which is a hot to neutral fault, which in the meter is the ground, or a, uh, a leg to leg short. If you don't check that and there's an arc flash, uh, this could be deadly here making this connection. I had an incident one time two or three years ago and I learned that lesson and I'll never make that mistake again. It was very scary. I got through it. So please check your wiring before you re-energize the electrical service. And if you have any doubt at all, have your power company come out and disconnect power before you do any of this work. So once the power was restored to the house, uh, I also have to do an electric vehicle circuit here. So I'm using three quarter inch PVC, which you might've seen the PVC male adapter at the top of the panel earlier on in the video. That's what that was for. So I'm just coming out of the top there. You see that green line? I got the laser level out and make a nice straight line going across the garage. I'm just going to that first bay or actually in between that bay I'm in and the garage door that's open. And I'm just bending some three quarter inch PVC with the PVC bender. 
that's just a big 18, 1800 watt heater and uh, I use my stud finder by Franklin sensors to find out where the studs are on that wall so I get some good straps for my conduit uh, for the electric vehicle I'm running two number six conductors I'm running a number eight neutral and a number 10 equipment grounding conductor all copper conductors to the NEMA 1450 receptacle in the four inch square metal box like I like to do. All right, so the last electric vehicle charger video that I did, uh, somebody had asked, did I use the $20 cheap uh, receptacle from Home Depot or the $100 one from the supply house? And that's a good question. Uh, the last one, I believe it wasn't Hubble, but it was from the Home Depot, and I'm trying to remember the brand name that it was, and I, I can't think of it at the moment. Uh, but this one here is a Pass and Seymour. This is what they sell at Cooper Electric, which is where I had to pick up this Square D QO panel from. And um, I don't know, the GFCIs from Pass and Seymour, I've always seemed to have a bad experience with them. Uh, but this felt every bit as, uh, as sturdy as the last NEMA 1450 I installed. So I believe it's all dependent upon how you terminate the wires in these inside these receptacles, in these devices. So um, these are all set screw. Uh, I don't have a torquing screwdriver. 
it's okay. I did this for years before the requirement was there. I know it's required now, and I, I guess in time I will get one. Uh, but I don't think these terminations are getting loose anytime soon. All right, I'm not exactly a petite gentleman, uh, so I spent a lot of times doing pull-ups at the gym, and I haven't been there lately. But I still have my muscles, and I'm proud of them. And I believe that I terminate these receptacles as required. Let me know in the comments what you think and which uh, NEMA 1450 receptacles you choose to use for your customers. So anytime you install an electrical vehicle charging circuit, okay, it needs to be GFCI protected. So I use a GFCI circuit breaker. That's the only way I know of getting that GFCI protection. Now, from what I understand is that the Tesla charger actually has the GFCI built into it and you don't need it for that. But for the NEMA 1450 inside this garage here, you're gonna need a GFCI recept protected receptacle for that car charger. 242. 119, 121, 121, 121, 121, 121. So for those of you who see my panel changes and upgrades and say, how come you don't identify the circuits? Well, here you go. I did it. I labeled each of them in the morning and I put the numbers on the, as they went into the panel on this piece of cardboard. So I'm able to use my label maker and put that on there real legibly so you can actually read it. Then you take your knockouts out of your panel cover and you're just about set. And uh, this was a long day. I was pulling out of there a little bit after seven o'clock. I got about an hour ride home to Point Pleasant, New Jersey, where I finally did make it. Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Say how good the electrician was. Hi. <laughs> All right, yeah, very good. Say hi. Awesome. I'm gonna make sure I put you in the video, okay? Okay. <laughs>